Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. This is JCB Live Happy Hour. I'm so excited, honored, and feel immensely privileged today to bring you one of the most incredible tycoon, friend, phenomenal entrepreneur, and fabulous man all the way from India. He is a Maharaja. He is one of the most amazing entrepreneurs in India, and he ventured to go into the world of wine. We had the pleasure to meet many years ago. It was love and friendship at first sight, what you call a coup de foudre in French. We became friends, and Capil had set up an incredible winery of over 200 hectares in India. One of the best and finest wine made ever as a partnership between some great Italian people and himself. He became one of the most well-known wine man in India. Very fortunately, Capil, as we stroke an incredible friendship, <clears throat> said one day, let's create a wine together. Let's change the landscape of India. Together, a few years ago, we embarked, as you could see today, I'm wearing what a most noble, beautiful suit from India that Kapil so kindly offered me, adorned with our jewelry, to be part of the Indian luxury vision of producing the finest wines in India. So dear friends, today is a very unique day and I'm thrilled, honored again, and excited to bring you the culture of India to America and around the world. Kapil, are you with us? Yes. Always, of course. Bonjour, Kapil. How are you? Well, we're so excited to have you with us, Kapil. You excited look to be here. Excited to be here. So, Kapil, we got to celebrate with one of our most amazing wines. This is JCD number 47. And I'm going slowly because I want all our guests to listen to the beautiful sound of India. Woo! And it reached today Patrick and Dylan as a ricochet. And Dylan swallowed the cork because he believes in what India represents. Woo! I love that sound. So Kapil, how is it in India? It's so exciting to visit. Cheers. Uh, India, cheers, cheers. So what's happening in India today? I could see the beautiful sunshine outside. And how is the situation evolving? Well, I think uh, it's uh, not the best situation, but I think we are positive because uh, I think Indians are taking it resiliently. The recovery rates are high. Uh, so it's getting back to normal. I think it's uh, people are just uh, trying to face it, you know, trying to dodge it. So hopefully it should be okay. I think two more months and, you know, should be behind us. All good. And you know, dear friends, what I love the most, not only Kapil, his beautiful wife, Pooja, and his family, always this phenomenal positiveness. Life is always greater in the future. So Kapil, tell us what it is to be raised in India with such great siblings and being now in the wine world? Well, I think the wine world is new to India. Forget to our family. Uh, so, and being in a, even a consumer business is new in the family. But going, yeah, you know, growing up was very different. You know, growing up was 21 people, one house, uh, one kitchen, you know, like, like you know the story. So, you know, always heard the stories. I haven't seen them. Thank God I've not witnessed them. But, you know, grandfather, great-grandfather coming from the Pakistan side of India during independence. But every year was better, John Charles. We have, we have, you know, our generation has only seen positivity. So every year was better than the last. So we have nothing to complain. I think we just have to remember our past, respect the past, live the present, but be prepared for the future. I think that's what our generation needs to do. Well, I think this is an amazing philosophy. And guess what? You know, to live the present and the future, honoring the past, we created together a one. Absolutely. So tell all of us about it because it has a very captivating number. Well, the number was, you know, like you said, I think it's going with the same philosophy we discussed that 
you know, India has to give many surprises to the world. You know, I think uh, we are known for many things, but I think we are unknown for too many things. And I think it, it's about time we try to change that. And one was that when we started together was that, you know, trying to create a wine which can surprise the most discerning clientele. And that's when we, you know, started working on this lovely Bubbles of ours, which is 100% Chardonnay, you know, and thanks to your inputs and, you know, the way we worked on it. But when we produced it, it was just something so unique and uh, something which we all knew that will be different. We'll be standing on its own legs in, 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 you know, showcasing among the champions of the world. So we could not call it but number 47, which is the year of India's independence. So in our own, in our own connotation, it's like here, we, we believe now economic independence, which is like, you know, showcasing India on the world stage. So that's how the number 47 came about. So that's, that's JCB number 47 for everybody. And, you know, we're all enjoying it. And I say namaste, because <laughs> this is an unbelievable wine. And, and Leanne is with us, as you know, who's been at the origin of this amazing journey together. And I need to tell all our friends that I did not have the intention going to India to visit our friend Kapil, who became a friend immediately, instantaneously, to actually create a joint venture and a wine in India. It was really our passion and the excitement of what Kapil had started that really made us wanted to make a difference together. So Kapil, is sparkling wine very well known in India at this stage? Sparkling wine is one of the most uh, recognized categories because the, what it does, sparkling, it's like you rightly said, Indians love to celebrate the positivity which you said. It's that future is good, future is ahead. You know, embrace it. Don't try to hide from it. So a celebratory bubbles, you know, just fits in very nicely. So even I remember even during my, you know, like when we were growing up and so even my, you know, we, were a, we are a spirit drinking country, as we all know, you know, the highest amount of bound spirits in the world is India. I think all the, you know, the liquor companies are surviving on based on India consumption. But in, in all the celebrations, like anniversaries, birthdays, popping up a bubble was becoming kind of a, you know, kind of a ritual. So I think uh, sparkling wine, bubbles, bubbly, you know, so many different connotations being given in India now is really a road for people to open a beautiful world of wine, you know, to everybody. But that's... That's, this is the enter into the world of wine through bubbles. And I love the fact that this is 100% Chardonnay. You know, for everyone who will soon enjoy a bottle of JCB 47, this is all about the passionate, united, and of course, liberated. You know, there's three words behind every JCB bottles is because we're really honoring the past. We're really grateful of India taking its independence in 47, and really becoming this amazing nation. I mean, aren't you proud about this amazing evolution of India, Kapil? Oh, I, I am. Honestly, I'm, I'm uh, I think, uh, proud of everything that, you know, God's got us. Uh, when we started, it was a very different, very humble venture. We just wanted to create something, try different things. Ignorance is bliss, uh, you know. So we just said, well, since there was no knowledge, and, and at that time, we just said, let's try everything, you know. Because you don't have, you know, when, when there is, when you, you know, I always believe that if you are not 100% certain that it's not going to work, you should try it. Because that 1% certainty is what brings you luck. So that's the mantra I live by. You know, that till the time you're 100% sure that it's not going to work, you should try. You know, what's the harm? You never live with regrets. I think so that's, 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 that's our philosophy. I, Kapil, that's a wise word as you're a very wise man. You know, when you 1%, you go for it. And how did you get the idea? Why wine? Was it on a trip to Europe or US or what happened? I think, no, it was not just one thing, Josh Hans. I love the product because I think, you, you know, we've discussed enough. And for me, so living in UK, living in London, I was not a pub going boy. You know, I never, I never liked guzzling beers. Uh, you know, I, I was not into, you know, drinking alcohol or something. But what I loved about wine is on my trips to Europe for work, is that I love the, uh, you know, the, the whole experience of drinking wine, that you, you decide on exactly if you buy it or not after trying it on the table. I think that's what got me, that it's an art for your senses. You, know, you, you get to taste and then you get to decide that whether it's lived up to the expectations. So wines, wine bottles got a lot of pressure. Each and every bottle has to speak to you, otherwise it goes back, you know, yeah. and everybody's going to frown upon it. So it's a living product, it's a living bottle. So just imagine, the, and I love that fact. So that's what got me into drinking wine. And for India, I think it, it's, for me, it was a no-brainer because I, I believe that 
uh, when people see wine, you know, they, you know, they see uh, maybe um, a good experience, enjoyment, everything. But what, what I also see with that, what it brings is barren land into cultivation. India is among the largest amount of barren land, uh, which is not a great statistics. It brings women employment, which we love the fact in all about women empowerment. So for me, it was a lot of those things. And of course, it's a great, it's a great business to be patiently invested. So it was, it was, it was passion. It was all the things good, you know, going together. But that's quite amazing because for you, and I think our JCB live moments are always great because they're sometimes full of wisdom and full of knowledge and full of education. And I think people have so much to learn from you in many ways. When you outlook on life, your great vision as a family and then an amazing entrepreneur as a businessman. So how was it for you, Kapil, to move from the industries you're involved in and you're still involved in so many to suddenly putting your hands in the terroir, in the soil and really planting vineyards, importing rootstocks from Europe and getting started. How was that emotionally and how did that adrenaline inside of you push you to do what you did? I think it was culmination of years and years of, you know, feelings, you know, like I, I started working when I was in UK after finishing my college. Um, and I, again, it was this feeling of that, you know, uh, that we as a generation, like I was saying, that we have just only heard about the hardships. We've never seen those hardships. We just saw every year get better. Uh, but in UK, when we were there, you know, we accept the food. I think that's the only thing we were respected for. The, uh, everything else about India, you know, I'm talking in early 90s was, you know, it's Indian, you know, it, it was like, it's Indian, you know, with a little with of a... More than just the food we respect about India. You know, yeah. I feel talking to you already very centered. I think you've realigned my chakras without knowing it. <laughs> so it was, it was just like a lot of that things. And I think uh, it was the feeling of, like you're saying, fire that, okay, we have, we have been educated uh, globally, you know, we know what goes on. And I think, uh, uh, which is, you know, and I was very enamored with, you know, also the early... Uh, 19th century on was the, you know, the entrepreneurs in America, in Europe, that how they built, you know, pioneering projects, uh, trying different things. So, you know, with a simple thing that, I, you know, I could not shy away from the fact that we had a privileged background, uh, but it was about to, to do something about it. Either you just, you know, go with the flow, or you try to change the flow. So for me, the, the wine and the vineyards was that, that you know, let, let me try and make a mark or leave a mark, you know, good, bad or ugly, but let's leave a mark and try it. You know? So that's how we got in the ring. Now, to move away, to become a little more spiritual for a moment, before we go and try one of the Genoon Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc blend, you have an incredible painting and you have an insane art collection from sculptures to paintings to all kinds of art in your home where you are. And I could see you in the dining room now. You have a symbol behind you that is very powerful. Two symbols, in fact, you have a, you know, a religious figure, of course, with a, uh, a light going through it. And then you have an amazing painting, which represents the symbol of India, which is, of course, one of your great gifts that you offered me for my birthday, which is the cow. So would you talk about the meaning of this and what it represents to you as well? Sure. So, you know, it, it, uh, I think uh, the spirituality or, or the road to, um, I think, enlightenment, I think that's, that's a better word, which is your inner peace and inner wisdom, I think honestly came to me after the wine business because I'm being very, very candid on, on the live chat here that what got me into the wine business was my confidence, was like, you know, at the early age of mid-30s, you think you can change the world. So, you know, we just got so, you know, completely boxed in that we're going to do everything the best. We're going to import the best plants from France, Kyo, the nursery, your friend. So all the plants came from him. You know, we are not going to leave anything, any stone unturned. You have to give a world-class product. And then we made the product. And we just, we were, I would say we were arrogant because our product we knew was great. You know, when we were making tastings and everything, people were saying, wow, we've never tasted wine like this from India. So we thought, well, you know, we, sh we should be able to sell it on its own because it's such a great product. So actually my journey of, you know, getting into inner peace was when we started actually tasting failure that even having such a great product in the initial years of Fidelity, why people weren't flogging and buying them? Why weren't distributors coming to buy us? Why weren't customers respecting us? Why were they still okay buying 
you know, whatever little wine they were used to drinking. And I think that's what made me humble, you know, John Charles, I'll be very honest. That's what made me look inside that, okay, what is it that, you know, we have, you know, what have, what have we, what have we done wrong? What did we do? What was, was our intentions wrong? What are, what is our, because we have a great product, we've done everything, what everybody said should be done. But why, why is it not, you know, why is it not a runaway success? So I think literally like, you know, and I remember that, you know, coming days, you know, Pooja used to literally see me, you know, like literally completely a changed man, you know, because it was, it was like, you know, my mind was going all over, you know, like the, what the hell has happened? You know, like we have done this and still, so, and she, I remember she used to always say that, remember what success gets you and it's not what it makes you. Uh, sorry, it's, it's other words. Whatever success, what makes you doesn't what gets you and it's made you a better person. It's made you a more humble person. It's made you look inside. So I think the project is good. Just carry on. So I think that's what made my journey start. And then, you know, of course, then we, we you know, India's, uh, our whole religion, you know, which, which you're talking about, part of it is about inner peace. That uh, it's very simple. It's a very simple religion. Well, it's, it's a philosophy of life. I think we should go a little bit on that because it's such an important word. It's such a powerful statement today that your religion is all about peace. So could you develop on that for a moment and, and relate it to my artistic piece you gave me and as well the picture behind you because you won't escape from the symbol of the mother. Yeah, so there are two very different symbols what you're talking here. It's basically about, uh, you know, the, our philosophy of life. I don't even want to call it religion because I think religion to me has become a bad word in time to come. It's, it's a philosophy of living a good life. You know, there is no mantras in our books. There are no, you know, like typical like Indian thing. There are no uh, Vedic chants that, you know, it's just about, you know, what you have to realize in self. So what you have is what we call is like a bull, you know, which was, which was like one of the biggest fighters. It's like, and the bull was a symbol that uh, Nandi, as we call it. So it is always, so we, there are three forces, right? There are three forces in the world, which is your creator, your preserver and destroyer, which is, which is like what life is, right? Whatever, like Great. look at, look at plants, plants, right? Correct. Sure. Everything comes from earth, everything goes back into earth. So it's, it's simple as that, that every living organism, everything around us, that's what it is. You know, it's finite and infinite. So it's creation, preservation, destruction. And one of the, you know, the gods of destroying evil, which is also gain everything, everything in India, unfortunately, in a, now in a very, you know, humanistic way, everything in India has a double meaning. So all, all what we say, everything in India. So it was about the destruction also means like destroying everything. It was, it was destroying your inner evil. So how do you destroy your inner evil? It's first you have to enlighten your consciousness. How do you enlighten your consciousness? It's through meditation. How do you get to meditate without being disturbed is what this bull represents. that when, so always the God of destroying evil used to be sitting in front of this bull and the bull's job was with its nostrils because it was so strong and powerful is that, you know, to, so that there is no noise and nothing. So serenity, the little blows of the nose and, and facing the bull helped him meditate. So that's why, so for me, I knew that, you know, and also the journey, John Charles is always for you to find. So if you remember, it was your, own inclination, you know, about, you know, your knowledge, which is way deeper than me on lunar and, you know, how you follow by dynamic in your vineyards is I got to know, okay, so you are interested. So that's the reason I couldn't think of anything but to give you this because, so this is kind of our way to help you get into the journey, which you're already on, which is to meditate. So by looking at them, serenity, block everything else around, just concentrate on them. So that's it. So every time there is, if you come to the temples, the, you know, the statue of destroying the evil will always be facing the Nandi, which you have. I love so, it. So, so in a way, we have, we, have, we have christened you as Shiva, the Lord Shiva, the, you know, the Lord of destroying evil. That's what you are. <laughs> well, I think what you are is uh, really a creator as well. And I, I really believe you imagine and then you create and then you continue to preserve for the next generation. So I feel is a very good time, Kapil, to try the fabulous J. Noon. Fabulous, yes. As everybody will see, this is this unbelievable bottle of wine that has that antique green with, in gold, J. Noon. And I would like for you, Kapil, to explain, you know, the meaning of J. Noon and what it represents because I really believe everybody has it inside somewhere and everybody needs to have it out. And I think there's no better time to have you on our JCB Live because of your wisdom, 
your knowledge and your sense of deep enlightenment for everyone else. So cheers, Kapil. Cheers. On the Jainun White from India and the Jainun Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc. So tell us about the name and, you know, the wine. Well, the name, name is a joint creation. So name, in, in, in literal sense, name means uh, borderline madness. Um, you know, I think, which I think in, in our own self, we both carry. I think that's what connected. I think it's, and I think you're being humble, but I think it's also your openness. And I think your mantra is more than, you know, mine, which is that always try, you know, never have a regret. So Junoon is about that, you know, like you, so rightly, I think that's a great thing you pointed that ignite that something new. So it's, it's, it's what in a slang we call the mojo. In the Japanese language, we call the ikigai. You know, what gets you out of the bed. So Junoon is that, that find yourself, find that spot. In bed too, you know. I'm like yeah. Austin Powers. I still have not lost my mojo. Yeah. <laughs> <Because of> so, <laughs> you see how I so pretend I've been yeah. today, right? So Junoon is that. Junoon is fine. Like it's, it's basically passion. It is uh, about, you know, being positive, being confident. I think, and I think you're so right. In the current times that we, the whole world is living, I think we, we cannot give that up. We cannot let the spirit destroy. So that's your infinite spirit. That's what Junoon is. That, you know, it's, it's, so it's a simple thing, right? You know, there's a famous quote that I've got now, right now, framed in my front office that nobody can, you know, destroy an iron, but its own rust. So, and nobody can destroy a human being, but its own mindset. So your mindset has to be positive. That's it. And that's infinite. So that's what Junoon stands. And I think that's what the bottle is to come in. And it's about, and that's what we've done, right? Chardonnay and Sauvignon. How many blends do you know? You know, Chardonnay and Sauvignon. It's really. So it's, it's actually a, a, an important segue to explain to everybody that typically Chardonnay lives on its own. The only time it's actually blended, it's with champagne. With Pinot Noir or Pinot Meunier, Often, it lives on its own. When you think about Burgundy, it's Chardonnay on its own. You think about a few other world regions that you could eventually blend it. But what was so exciting, if you ever go and see the beautiful estate, and, and Capelli, in a moment, you need to tell us where it is. We blended here together with Capil all night and his amazing winemaking team, the two phenomenal grape varieties. Chardonnay, the queen of Burgundy, the essence of the Russian river, you know, the cool climate. And we associated it with Sauvignon Blanc. And if you think France for a moment, you think the Loire Valley, the Valley of the King. So you really build the queen of Burgundy, the only and the only there is to shine, Chardonnay, with Sauvignon Blanc. So when we all love food, Capil, when we thought that evening after eating and drinking and drinking and eating, we said to ourselves, we need as well to have something that goes amazingly with food. And I really believe that was achieved thanks to those two great varieties. But tell me, Kapil, tell me about, tell us about, you know, those great varieties and, and how it works magically with Indian food and give us as well a sense of geography of where the estate is. So the estate, let's start with that. So estate is, uh, you know, south, northeast of uh, Bombay, uh, southeast of Bombay, which is 330 kilometers inside the trench line. And it's the start of one of the largest plateaus in the world, which is the Deccan Plateau. So cosmically, millions of years back, you know, we were all part of the Australia, the big thing. And then, you know, then the cosmic, you know, the evolution happened and the Himalayas came about. So it still sits on the, on the similar kind of the altitude as most of the European vineyards, what I've been told is like about, uh, about 600 meters, uh, about 400 meters to it's about 600 meters. That's, that's what the was. soil is very volcanic, um, very, very dry, a lot of minerality, a lot of heat, which has been done. So uh, I think for us, it was uh, why we did that also, because typically where in the Indian wines were coming from was actually a region, which is triangle, which is like, you can say, you know, uh, Northeast to Bombay which is more known for the grapes, which was more richer soil, so easier to make the wines. But whereas this was, a, it's a very dry, arid area. But our whole idea was to bring in the minerality, the terroir that you can taste. So that's why we chose this area. It's actually a rain shadow area. And we love the fact that when we went to the government, you know, they laughed at us. They said, yeah, yeah, you know, please go and buy the land. And you know, like they said, that, you know, because it's, it's a cattle grazing land, you know, that uh, 
you know, that's so that in our government record is a wasteland. You know, that, that basically it's good for nothing. So we said, great. So then you don't mind us buying it. You know, we went to the farmers, uh, landowners, as I call them. I said, because you don't have, you know, they're not farmers. The poor fellows are just stuck with the land. There's no irrigation inside. So we, you know, pieced in, in that land. We took a lot of time because we obviously needed to do a lot of research on soil. Uh, we weren't happy even with the uh, kind of results which we were getting from the Indian uh, laboratories. So a lot of times the soils were actually went to, you know, Europe to get it tested for basic, you know, layers of calcium carbonates and everything. But we were pretty confident that, you know, we should be able to get a high quality wine, low yielding, high quality. But we were okay with that because the whole idea was the quality. That's how this came about. So in terms of where it is located, it's five hours drive from Bombay. Or if you're in Pune, then three hours fly, drive and then you're there. You're in the oasis. You know, Kapil, for everyone, you need to go to India. One of the most amazing places, spiritually, intellectually. The vision of India from the beginning of time to today has influenced all of us so much with knowing and without knowing. And you got to go to this town in Pune, which is only 12 million inhabitants. So it's not necessarily a small town. And then you drive away and you arrive to this magnificent estate, Kapil, that you built from scratch. Well, yeah, well, God created it. We were just, we were just the hands of the God, as we say, you know. It's his doing, it's agriculture. You know, we can't control anything. So, yeah. but thank you for that. <laughs> well, Kapil, tell us, you know, what drives you? What, what, what really motivates you in the morning? Because a lot of, all of us look for, you know, great influence, great ideas, great inspiration. And you are a very driven individual, not only for business, but for more. So give us what is inside. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's just, uh, it's just a way of starting looking at life after the wine business that, uh, you know, if you get up in the morning and always just, you know, say, just say, okay, you're thankful for the bed. You're thankful for, you know, like all the comforts around you. And I think there's a purpose that uh, it's about time you, that you do something that you enjoy, but which is bigger purpose than just being selfish of trying to hold in. I think that's, and then the creativity, I love that. Uh, and sometimes I think not as much as, sorry. Forgive me to interrupt. What, what's your greater purpose? Not only by doing this venture, but in general. Because... So, wait, Okay, so very good question. So I've been, I've been asking, I've been asking that, in, in, you know, and we have had many discussions on that, and that's the reason, you know, we, you know, we are both on the book that, you know, we, we, you know, keep discussing about. And I think that's that's what I keep asking. And that's what I keep asking the power up there. That okay, what is my purpose? You know, why did you expose me to so much? You know, because expose means that I think it's about the life, the paradigm that I've seen. I've seen the life from, you know, understanding that my grandparents and my you know, had to leave everything, pack the bags, move into a new country. You know, everything was a novelty. You know, nothing was taken for granted. I know, I remember the days my great-grandfather is standing outside the house waiting for me to come back from school with a peeled orange because it's very hot. Um, even getting a refrigerator in the house was great. Now, you know, even getting a colored television in the house was fantastic. Even from watching one Spider-Man cartoon as a kid to then being exposed to 100 channels by the time I got to college. So, you know, if, and if you don't realize the change and you don't understand and embrace it and try to do something with it, then I think, then, then I think it's, it's, it's each to their own. But to me, it was all that, that, okay, there is, there is a reason, you know, we have to do things. We have to put India back on the world map. You know, it's, it's got so much to give, like you say, and I'm talking in terms of the world, you know, the spirituality, the inner peace, you know, the, the microclimates, the terroirs, you know, the patience of the people. Means with all respect, you know, we, you know, we have had, you know, problems of migrants, as we all have heard. But no violence, you know, people are patient, you know, they understand, they embrace. So it was that, so for my purpose was that in, in, in the same book that we all, we, you know, we want to follow is, so it's basically purpose is that your first purpose should be your, all your actions should be good for the family. And when I say family, family means to me an extended family, which is your business family, which is your family in the house and the family in the work. So whatever you do, should the purpose should be that, are you doing something which benefits all of them? I think once you've done that, the second tick mark is, are you doing something which is good for the community? You know, that's, that's the second phase that you get to. Once you've ticked that, then is that, are you doing something which is good for the country? You know, then that's the third tick. Then the fourth mm -hmm. is that, or are you doing something which is good for the planet? Because ultimately we're all one. 
So to me, as long as there is tick one, tick two, tick three, tick four, I'll just do it. That's brilliant. Ooh la la, Kapil. A lot of meaning into this. You know, my beautiful cashmere jacket that you offered me <laughs> is giving me some extraordinary signals of heat and excitement. Why? Because you're talking about the meaning of life, which is so phenomenal. And, you know, on that note, Kapil, you offered me, and we, we spend, for many friends who are with us a lot on the JCB Live as well as social media and who know me, I've spent the best trip of my life with my lovely wife, Gina, and our daughters, thanks to Pooja, yourself, and of course, your children. And we had the most exceptional days away from what we knew, which was India. And you crafted the most amazing trip. And at some stage, we need to take a lot of our wine lovers to India. Sure. But you, you offered me something of an enormous meaning besides all the kindness, the hospitality, the friendship and the enlightenment you gave me personally through all our phenomenal evening discussions, morning, breakfast, and everything else. This is something which we should advise to the world. <laughs> I would love for you to talk about it. <laughs> well, it has to be sought, I not bought. Everybody, you've offered me the whole collection because there's 17 of those. 18. 18, yeah. So can you explain what that is? <laughs> I think so, that, uh, so, you know, I, I even offered, if in fact, if you said in gifted, I offered because the, the book, which is a philosophy of life, which is what that is, um, if you read it, which is the English, which is what even I read it. So, you know, because I don't understand Hindi or Sanskrit or whatever. So that's a new India. And was, it's, it's a philosophy of life. It's just the way of living a better life. Um, and that's why it's divided like so everything in India is somehow that God uh, had um, everything like I said has got very deeper meaning so I think uh, there was a lovely word at that, that when God made human beings he made it with more compassion than justice because if he believed in justice we'll all be dead by then you know because it's a compassion you know it's his love for us yeah. so the book really starts that you know you are at the last stage of evolution to be born as a human so first and foremost, respect that that you are born as a human itself as a gift of God so you should respect that. And I think the second thing is that he, it's, a, it's the first time that God created something which is supposed to be lived in companionship. So that's why the 18, because there are nine you know, ways to penetrate your inner self, you know, which is two nostrils, you know, let's go on and you know, everybody can figure it out on their own. But so nine to two is like 18. So you know, find your companion, companionship. And then the book is like part of your companion to lead you through the journey of living a better life. And one of the chapters, the seventh chapter, what you're talking about is knowledge and wisdom. So, which is, again, if you read through it, again, it is, it is, see, there is no, if you notice that in a lot of people, like, uh, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, because in India also, that they think that, okay, Gita is something which is going to be very, very polite and everything, but it's very direct. It clearly says that, okay, you know, if this is the path you want to lead to, then these are the sacrifices or, you know, steadfastness, your resolute, your, you know, your self-control, all that. So knowledge and wisdom is again, it's, it's something to be sought, not bought. So it's not like you can go to the book and your knowledge and your wise. I think it's, it's to live by the principles which that chapter will teach you. And I love how you read it because you showed me one of your copy and you underline and go back to it. And this is really what I've done. Uh, my favorite, maybe because it's the shortest and I could have a short attention span, is chapter 15 which really summarized the supreme spirit. Yeah. And Kapil, I'm a very big fan of this, you know, compendium of 60 pages that brings the entire Vendata in its verses philosophy into one. And yes. I think this one is the one I would take with me everywhere and keep reflecting on. 100%. So I just finished that last week, but yeah, you're right. So that's basically, that's what tells you that, you know, there is your oneness, everybody's one. So, you know, that's what it says, the spirit in all of us. So it's like the electricity, right? The same electricity can light a bulb, can, you know, light a television. So it's the electricity all around us is all one. 
it's it's the individual bodies which and that's a gift of god which is life which is the breath you know this so that's why there's a lot of meditation in our yoga which is breathing so because the the you know the main breath the simple breath in each organism is still the time you're living and that's that's a gift of the power up there you know like uh, the minutes is gone your core you know and and that's just imagine scientifically also that nobody's been able to prove so everybody knows okay heart pumps but even scientifically so far nobody's proven okay where does a heart beat come from and and scientists have given oh it's a it, it's a misinterpretation of the you know the algorithm which your which your heart pumps it like erratically but so far what i've read in the book that nobody's been able to prove okay you can prove everything else but where does a heart beat come from and that's what supreme spirit combines and tells you from that there are certain phenomena still not explained by science well as jc could tell you the only thing that keeps my heart going is jainun red to do yes so <laughs> i think this is a perfect segue to talk about really what gets your heart going but thank you kapil for all those great phenomenal moments of enlightenment because we never spend enough time to reflect on ourselves on the further spirits on what influences us and how we want to influence what is given to us and i feel you a supreme example this is really why i wanted all our friends in the world to meet you and obviously to be able to discuss with you and think about what you've said because again your wisdom always so much impresses me to the point that your entrepreneurship and craziness too because cheers i know you love crystal and i cannot yeah. not tell you that bakara thanks to india in the early 19th century became even a greater phenomenal company ever before you know the first ever crystal maker of friends that really brought crystal all over the world we had san luis crystal but then we had bakara in 1764 and a lot of the key maharaja of india you know added their touch and you may remember the ruby among yes. any chandelier it's thanks to india because a maharaja was offered a beautiful chandelier and he said i love it but i need precious stone on it it cannot just be clear well, crystal you know and yeah that beautiful piece so i kept bill in all this wisdom you were crazy to actually plant those phenomenal red grapes in india and i think for everybody listening they need to realize we have a lot of other great friends of course in india that have done wonderful fantastic estates you've been going beyond everybody else your vision was luxury your vision was going beyond the boundaries and making a wine to be highly ranked on the international stage to be part of the finest table of celebration around the world so tell us about the genuine red and what was created here because i think this is a major statement and what people would never imagine could happen in india so for me genuine red is is the is the spirit that you talked about so whenever i'm in doubt whenever i'm you know that i'm a crazy you know that's a self doubt question which we all must have i just open the bottle of this lovely wine that you created you created and uh, i put it in a glass and i take a couple of sips and that that spirit that craziness comes back that we have to keep going i think it's it's all this wine to me is is for everybody out there who has a question mark sometimes that whether i'll get there whether we can do it you know open this bottle it'll bring out the possibility because it is just something that we've all created it's the underdog you know I, you know i was just sitting here and you said okay what do you think of that you know the first thing that comes to my mind is of course it's bold it's confident not arrogant but it's confident that i can live up to anybody's expectations it's got self discipline it's very structured you know uh, it's it's got all that nice complexity which comes in but it's also get the little bit of madness you know and i don't know why but you know i can't take this thought out of my head today you know i don't know there was this crazy movie where a jamaican team you know won the you know the cannonball run you know it was like that sledge hammer and a team from jamaica you know one one that so to me it is that it is about that mindset it is about the positivity that as long as you know there's a beautiful word of our like a slogan i came across of mahatma gandhi you know the, the 
father of a nation. And he says that as long as I have a belief that I can do it, I will find my way along to know how to do it. You know? And I think and, that's what this is. And that shows to everyone with us today that everything is possible. You set yeah. your mind to it and you do it. So Kapil, tell us to blend because this is amazing. Many people don't think that those noble, aristocratic, great variety can grow in India. So give us the combination, the composition, the melody of Jainun. Well, it's, it's your crazy blend, or I think it's 2017, which I'm sure you have there, which Good. is uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, you know, Cabernet Franc, then it's got Petit Bordeaux. And now, of course, with your inputs, Marsala has been fermented separately from 2018 onwards, but this also has a 4% of Sangiovese. So now, how many blends can you think of? You know, when you made it, he says, okay, you know, that's what we're going to do. So we've got Cabernet Sauvignon, we've got Sangiovese, we've got Cabernet Franc, we've got Petit Bordeaux. So it's predominantly a Cabernet Sauvignon. I think it's more than 58% of Cabernet Sauvignon, but then it's being led by, you know, nicely with Petit Bordeaux and Cabernet Franc and just 4% of Sangiovese. That's what the blend is. I think in, in your, I think when you tasted it, when you made it, in, in your mind, which you know better than me, I think where you put it was that it reminds you of something from right bank of Bodo. I think uh, that's what you wanted to create. So a nice culmination from a Napa blend to a French Bodo blend is, I think, what I remember you. With a little you know. bit of an Italian touch. And the <laughs> but which is great is we created this together, we. And talking about we, Capil, I have very few questions, although, as you know, we've spoken together for 15 hours straight without sleeping. We have so much, you know, friendship and brotherhood together. You have an amazing family, as you've discussed, grandparents, parents. You have a lady in your life that I adore. She is insanely fabulous. She has a great <laughs> influence on you, and her name is Pooja. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your incredible wife and how she contributes to your life and to you as a person and made you who you are today? So, you know, I think what's, since you have your viewers, and I think what's, what shocks the people most, and I think that's what they have to understand, maybe my craziness and her craziness is, that uh, coming from completely very, very open-minded backgrounds, uh, so that there's no different connotation in India, very liberated mindsets, uh, both our parents, uh, she's, you know, spent a lot of time abroad. I have studied abroad, uh, came back and uh, actually our parents, uh, you know, tried to pull us together because they thought that we can both connect. And they actually said that you should go out. So your parents a couple of eventually organized you to meet. Yes. So I think since, since your audience, I'm sure is, is, is going to be pop smack more than the wine than the story is this, that we both decided to get married in 45 minutes. So in, in one meal, over a meal, on a bottle of wine, maybe it was a wine, and I was sitting down because I was much heavier. So maybe I got her enamored with a little intoxication, never harms. So we both decided to get married in 45 minutes, one evening. And that's the leap of faith. So I have faith in your fate. Uh, we both connected on, you know, we said, okay. So it was, I think both of us, we, even though we believed that it was a decision made in, you know, hurry, but no, I think it was a decision made in a good, you know, calculated judgment that we both, realize that on, on a macro level, we both stand for the same values. And uh, then we will both grow along. So she was 25, uh, I was 25, she was 23. Um, so we've really grown up together. You know, we, we, have, we, have, we have, you know, scrupulously, well, more, she more than, you know, me than her. So we both literally change each other's life, likes, dislikes. It tells you when you know, you know, 45 minutes later, less than an hour, you decided you asked, did you go on your knee or how did that happen? Uh, well, she's going to kill me. But I, it, for me, it was like, see, I started working from the age of 20. I finished my graduation and I was in business. So for me, at the age of 25, I think it was, it was everything was work around me. And uh, so it, for me, it was, I don't know, it was completely unromantic. I think I've changed since then. So I literally said that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm laying my cards on the table. And uh, so my work means everything to me. And, and it was, it was a clear, it was no going down on the knees. It was no romantic, nothing. It was just simple, pure fact of your life. So what has been her greatest influence on you as the amazing capital we know today? Do you know, I tell you the greatest influence and I was telling her last week is that she's not, and I, and I say it with all humility and humbleness, 
She's not a typical Indian wife who's going to spoil you. She is like your partner, your companion. But if you, if she gets to know that you're slipping, she's going to be there in a, in a good way to make sure that you know that you slip, you know? So, and I like that. I love that. I need that, you know, because sometimes when you're overly critical, you know, you can go over, you can go mad. So I think she's that guiding principle. You know, she knows when to, when to let me lose and when to rein me in. So I think and that's I been a bit together make so much one and having spent so much time with the both of you, it's marvelous to observe that in 45 minutes, you know, Faye, do you actually believe in destiny? Well, okay, so I'm not superstitious. Um, I don't believe in, um, you know, like uh, trying to do things to get somewhere. I think you should do things just with good intent and good purpose. And wherever it gets you, it gets you. So do you believe in fate? In what way we will fate? If we say that, okay, fate in a way that you judge it, when you get there, no. But I believe that, uh, I think as long as your intentions are clear, it should get you where it gets you. And then if it doesn't get you where you wanted to get you, then, you know, just let's, let's change the track. So of course, but there is, see, there is like how I met you, you know, and, and what you said, and it's all about me, but I think people should know that. So, and I was laughing, by the way, just last week, I was telling my people, so remember when you come to India and you started talking about lunar and biodynamics and how you're influenced by in the agriculture about the moon power and, and everybody even in India, you know, used to like journalists, remember like John Charles, this is it. JC, what are you talking about? And that's what, that's what the philosophy of life says. It's about the moon energy, it, which is influences agriculture. So I think you yourself are in a much, much higher level. I think, I think people should know that. And I think that's what the whole world is. But I think it's, it's, it's about finding your, your inner self and, and doing what you like doing. And it seems, not that it seems you have, but you did find your inner self. So, Kapil, I have to ask you the question. What is truly your unlimited passion and dream that you have not yet achieved? For me, John Charles, I've taken a lot of inspiration from you. And I, know, and I say that, I think with your kind of creativity, of your zest to keep going and being excited about everything you do. So for me, I think that's been a big, big also learning um, because as you can understand, right? So we've had enough conversations, even I was self-doubting, confused when we met that, okay, we've got all this, but why aren't people taking this thing seriously? Why still people think? So for me now, that's, that's the whole thing is that I just want to keep creating. I think uh, there are, I think there are a few people, I think, uh, who have the imagination. Uh, I can't match yours, but in my own way. So for me, my biggest thing is that as long as my mind is working, as long as, you know, I, I don't go cuckoo and I, <laughs> I forget everything I'm doing, is that I have to just keep creating. I love creating. I love it. It's beautiful, you know, planet we live in, beautiful energies we have around us. I think it's, it's just so nice to just create things. And you have such a fertile limitless imagination that I cannot wait to continue to see what you're creating because I witnessed it and I encourage everybody not only to go to India but if they want to come and visit with you that they let us know so they get a very personal touch. You know, you're not the Dalai Lama but you're much more to me because you have this wiseness, knowledge, sense of entrepreneurship and as well craziness and wildness as we know. That makes you the incredible person you are. Now, Kapil, last question of the night. As I'm having another sip of Genoon, is there a secret that you wish to share that you never told me? <laughs> or maybe Pooja does not even know. Your parents, your grandparents, your children. We got to go deeper within this fabulous soul that you are. Yeah, but you know, it's really not because I, you know, I think Pooja knows almost everything about me. I think because all our memories are together. But I think it, uh, not, there's no such secret, really, honestly. I've been thinking about it, you know, and really, and I would love to share, but I don't well, know. Maybe me further, is there maybe something you want to share that is going to transform or continue to transform who you are and who is your family? But I think the only transformation from my case is that I think I can say that don't give in. 
never give up. You know, it's 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 all your mindset. And I say it with examples. I say it with the you know personal experience. You know, every time we have been in a doubt, it, this is a crazy venture. What we did was a crazy venture. It means it doesn't make any sense on paper. You know, you know it. I know it. You know, if you and it's it's the, it's the trust that people put in you. But all along the way, when you're in doubt, then there is something which comes along your way. You know, like you have come along the way as one of our messias. You know, change the direction of Fratelli. So as long as your intents are good, you know, there's a. So I can. I really don't know any secret that I can share. Um, I, I think I've lived a great life. That's it. That's my problem right now. So I think I. You know, yeah, I think it's it's so beautiful. Well, exactly. Life is so beautiful, and I love what you just said. You know, following the path, continue to create, you know, continue to encourage your imagination. And, and what I admire the most with you beyond all the word of wisdom you so kindly shared tonight and all the enlightenment is you put your dream into action. And this is really something I would love all our friends today who are with us celebrating India, celebrating great wine, celebrating the impossible, celebrating the non-obvious, because you've created, Capil, the non-obvious of a country that we did not imagine could create such great wines, and you are doing it. So I think one of the night moments you should, we should all live with is, you know, to follow our dreams, to follow, Absolutely. right? And I want to to the incredible Puja, to your family, parents, and all the generation of the Sekri who are the best and showing a new vision to India. Well, thanks to you, John Charles. You, you know, you have, you're much more and beyond. So I think you've been very humble. It's my turn to speak, yours to ask, but truly to you, you know, to you to, for believing in us, for trusting what we do, and to our friendship. That's more than anything. And dear friends, I would echo that the most important thing we have when everything is gone is friendship. So Kapil to friendship, who said when we were born that a Frenchman living in America would meet a great Indian man who lived in Europe and we would create wine together? Who is to say, and this has happened? I want to thank you for all that. My Maraja, I want to thank your history, <laughs> your culture, and the wiseness of all your religion and gods to bring peace and obviously the celebrations of ones into the world. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.